Hi, welcome to Film Obsessive. This is Paul Johnson. I am here today with David Zumbrunnen, who is co-lead and executive producer of the new film, The Problem of the Hero. So welcome, David. And for those of you who've yet to see the film, uh, what can they expect of it? And why is it titled The Problem of the Hero? Well, Paul, thank you very much for having, having me. Uh, and I'll try to speak as best I can on behalf of the entire team. The Problem of the Hero. Uh, it is a film adaptation of a stage play called Native, uh, which is based on the true-to-life events where uh, groundbreaking novelist Richard Wright, the African-American novelist, uh, and Paul Green, who was a Pulitzer Prize-winning playwright from North Carolina for Abraham's Bosom, they actually partnered, uh, per Richard's request, on creating Native Son, it, Rich Wright's novel, Native Son, for this for the Broadway stage. As meta as that uh, dis brief description may sound at times, the most compelling parts of this uh, film and this story are really the experiences that these two men faced as their friendship developed in developing the stage play, uh, and particularly the experiences that they each brought associated with race, social strata, class, socioeconomic position, uh, personal agency, politics, a variety of ex personal experience that came, that they both brought very different and that led to uh, substantial conflict in that friendship that had developed. I, I'm afraid to get into too much more because it might be a bit of a spoiler, but um, what you can expect is what uh, has been called a passionate uh, and uh, crisp uh, exchange of personal opinion and beliefs that resonates pretty strongly, we believe, with uh, the world we live in today. And you play the Pulitzer Prize winning playwright Paul Green in the film, and you did on the on the stage as well. Um, were you originally involved in that production as a producer? And at what what point did the was the decision made to take this your play, uh, if you will, from the stage to the screen? My wife and I, Serena Ebhart, were producers of a theatrical outfit that is toured nationally with a variety of productions that are usually uh, rooted in either commissions or requests for us to adapt uh, true-to-life events or historical events that may have some resonance uh, in, in today's world. And we were approached, intriguingly enough, by the Paul Green Foundation over 10 years ago, well over a decade ago, about expanding awareness of Paul Green's uh, life. Uh, he was very much a social justice advocate, particularly here in the Southeast, uh, but about uh, increasing awareness of Paul Green's life and his work. Uh, that evolved into the story we have today, but Serena and I have developed works uh, that we oftentimes have taken on the roles ourselves. Uh, as, the, as the piece evolved, it became apparent that it would probably be um, best uh, that I take on the role, uh, the stage role. And uh, the gentleman you see playing Richard Wright, J. Madrice Henderson, actually took on the stage role himself. So uh, in some ways, it was like us wearing very comfortable clothing uh, in, in working together on the film as well. And in what ways was the filming uh, similar to or different from your performance on the stage? It's interesting. It, it, the film is very different than the play. Uh, in fact, uh, those who see the film may view it as rather intense in some of the discussions and the exchange that occur between Paul and Richard. But the play itself is centered strictly within the confines of a hotel room, the, the old Bristol Hotel in New York, New York City, where they where they met once or twice prior to the opening of the stage, uh, the Broadway adaptation and its opening. This is expanded into a theater. We have exterior shots with, and beyond that. But um, previously we had done, Serena and I had produced broadcast. This is our first attempt at a feature film. And thank goodness uh, that we chose the director and the 
director of photographer, the di- director of photography, Steve Milligan, the director, Sean Dozier. Uh, they really helped guide us uh, in our usual uh, exercise and punching above our weight uh, in taking on this kind of project, particularly the film project. Uh, we learned it was a steep learning cur- curve, but very quickly had to learn that broadcast is film is very different than uh, broadcast. Uh, and they were guiding us throughout the whole w- way. And to their credit, along with Ayana Johnson, the producer, helped develop a sense of ensemble that would exist in a theatrical production. And it was, and it's evident, I think, not only in the product, but also in in how the film in in the response that it's getting as well. And I imagine there's a degree of comfort in knowing that the two leads have already performed these roles to a degree of success <laughs> and satisfaction as well. But but you you both are um, performing roles of actual historical persons. I'm a little bit more familiar with the story of Richard Wright than I am of Paul Green. But what research do you do personally and what obligations do you have to the historical record as you prepare for and perform? Here in North Carolina, it's hard to escape not being exposed to Paul Green's work. His work is prolific in this state. His social justice advocacy, uh, particularly again, uh, particularly his um, efforts uh, to address inequities in our uh, um in our social, in our justice system in here in the country, but here, particularly in North Carolina and the South. So it's hard to avoid being exposed to him and his life's work. And I've been exposed to his work because I grew up in a household that truly uh, relished and embraced history and studying history. Uh, I've known about Paul Green since since my very young, very young years and read my, uh, a great deal of his work. I, uh, I, th- I think it's incumbent upon us to represent as genuine or to present and represent and portray as genuinely as possible uh, these people that we are uh, that, that we are in, in imbuing in our in our efforts, not only in, on the stage, but in film. But uh, that also entails sometimes exploring uncomfortable truths that uh, are universal in human nature, uh, whether it be the emotion, whether it be the personal belief whether it be the uh, uh, failures and mistakes in life, uh, it is incumbent upon us to recognize those genuinely as well. And all of those factors, I think, are, are those that we try to address in this film, not only in the crea- not only in creation of the film, but in the writing that James A. Hodge and Ian Finley did in, in, in adapting this from the stage play. I hope I answered your question on that. I, I think I did. You did. And it's interesting to me that although you are both playing persons who are uh, well, whose lives are well documented in the historical record, the actual film is limited to the work that takes place on a on a single evening as uh, the play Native Son is being prepared along with Canada Lee and John Houseman and Orson Welles and others for its uh, stage debut. Um, I'm wondering, um, is that a is that a play you'd ever seen? I know it's available to read. It occasionally gets performed still once in a while in a revival. So uh, the pl- the book and the play I've read many times. I've seen excerpts of certain uh, footage of plays that had been done uh, in the 20th century and under the tw- and in the 21st century. Um, and, and if you don't mind, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna veer off just a little bit because it, you brought up such an important point. This and it's come up at uh, in audience discussions and questions that we've gotten from journalists and review and reviewers and critics such as yourself um, about about the uh, that, that this is one episode. This is one brief episode in these two men's lives, and I think it's important to recognize that these two men lived incredibly active. Uh, lives that had such an impact on all of us today that we don't recognize or that we don't that we're not aware of. But this is one episode in two very uh, productive, active lives. Not only in 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 the arts and the cultural arts and the and the theatrical arts and the literary arts, but also in social justice advocacy and political advocacy. 
uh, and globe and that, not just domestically, but globally. And so I hope people, one of the drivers of creating this film and this story and, and the stage play as well, is that to allow people to become aware and be introduced to these two men. And hopefully they'll be encouraged to research much more about them beyond just this particular experience that these two gentlemen had for a brief amount of time in their lives. I apologize for going off a bit, but it's such an important point, and it's come up often in our in our uh, audience discussions after screenings. No, I'm absolutely aligned with you there, David. And Native Son is a it's a book that I taught many times uh, during my career as a literature and film professor. Uh, I don't think it's taught as frequently in the curriculum or regarded as canonical as it had been a generation or two before. Um, I'd asked about the play adaptation, which took place really not long after uh, Wright had finished the book. Um, and I'm wondering, is there much of that play viewers can expect to see when they watch uh, the problem of the hero? Uh, or is the the conversation between the debate between uh, Wright and Green really the center stage here? Uh, the the exploration of these two men's uh, background and their and their in, in their personal interaction with one another is the focus. And their per and the personal experience they bring to it—that's really the the crux of this film and this story, we believe. But uh, I mean, I could go on for a while. But what has happened, and what happens again at the audience screenings, and what was happening uh, while we created the stage play, and also what has happened as we created the film on the set. People would come in for a day at a time, and then be gone, or people would be there throughout. The same conversations that are happening in this film, in Ian Finley and James A. Hodge's screenplay, were mirrored in the conversations that were happening off camera, on the set, in the audience uh, responses to the screenings. Those same conversations are happening. And it's, uh, and, and yes, I say Ian Finley and James A. Hodge's writing, but those excerpts of the play that do indeed appear in, in the film and in the stage play, very brief. Um, help, um, I guess, would help uh, stir, stir the pot even more. Uh, uh, but I think it, it allows us to contextualize the play, uh, the, the play Native Son and the play Native when they occurred 80 years apart. And now the film 80, uh, 80 years afterwards, um, uh, the conversations that occur are due not only to the stage play native, but to the book and the content that appears in the film, but also uh, in the uh, in the play that is actually for which the film is entitled "The Problem of the Hero," which has never been published. By the way, it is a small play by Richard Wright, which was never published, which can be found in the I want to say the Beinecke Library at Yale. Uh, if people really want to dig, you have to dig to find it. But it's not only based on on the the book Native, the stage play Native Son, uh, the play Native, but also the problem of the hero by Richard Wright himself, which is also appears in the film is where I was headed. You know, we're talking about events that first occurred right around 1940 and then 1941 when Wright and Green were discussing the ending of the film that, uh, excuse me, the ending of the play that would pose the debate between the two of them. Uh, but you're absolutely right. The, the issues they were discussing and what was important to each man uh, are still ones that hold true with us today. Um, do you find yourself having played Paul Green more aligned with his perspective uh, on that debate than with rights? <laughs> oh, 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 boy, you have chosen a really hot topic and a hot button for a lot of people right there. Um, uh, and I think, you know, I've had to say this often. In fact, all of us have who have been involved with the production and the, the, the stage play and the film that said often. And I don't think it's disingenuous to say this. I think it's being just very candid and honest. We're still processing this ourselves, even as and, and even the film's reception at film festivals with critics. We're still processing this. I will 
say to everyone who will hear me, I hold Paul Green in such great admiration uh, for his life's work. I, I aspire to be the kind of man he was in his social justice advocacy. I will say that this experience, and it's been documented many times in interviews, and I think we allude to it briefly at the very end of the film, not, not too much a spoiler alert there, but Paul reflected and rude, this rude, uh, uh, I guess I could say regretted his some of some of his behavior in this and reflected on it till his, uh, for decades, almost to his dying day. And that's documented in correspondence and interviews. Um, and again, I come back to this is one episode, one brief episode in these men's experiences. So all that to say is. As Ian Fenley, who wrote the stage play and contributed to some of the screenplay, he said, you know, they're both right in their own way. They're both right. And that's what's so troubling and so difficult to to, to grasp for, for us seeing this unfold is that they both have viable viewpoints and perspectives on this as much as we may disagree with either one. Uh, and but they both have some some viable perspectives on this, uh, and I think it's important for us to to view it as, oh, they both have something to say that's worth listening to, as opposed to pointing and saying, well, that's wrong. We're pointing at how wrong they can be both at any given time, and in and, and, and in some cases, Paul in this particular piece. But Paul is somebody I, who, whose life, overall life, I aspire to I aspire to him in, in many ways. Um, so yes, I have an affinity for some of his viewpoints, but at the same time, I, I've been, I've, I've drawn, drawn gasps at some audiences responses when I, uh, say, uh, who could blame Richard for having some of the perspectives that he has and they, and people are still trying to understand uh, some of Richard's, uh, viewpoint in this. It's clear to me that neither man could really fully have or own the perspective of the other and the best they could do was to strive to understand the others and i do think uh the film draws them toward each other uh even you know at the end the show must go on there's a decision to be made and a and a play to be performed and a play that was by uh all measures uh quite quite successful for reviewers of its yeah. time challenging uh yeah. indeed i wish i had seen it uh back then i uh, had the opportunity to so the set changes would have taken a really more. the set changes would have taken a really long time okay <laughs> just so you know <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, David, thank you so much for joining us here at Film Obsessive today. Uh, I want to ask where and when can viewers next see the problem of the hero? We will screen at the Naples International Film Festival next week, uh, end of October. We're at the St. Louis International Film Festival uh, in November. Uh, uh, we're pleased to be there as well. Uh, there are some uh, upcoming possibilities that we are not ready to announce yet, uh, and we are most certainly in conversations with distributors at this time. Uh, but again, those are things that we're not ready to go deeper into uh, in revealing uh, more information. But stay tuned. I can assure you it's it, it will be out there. It will be out there for folks to enjoy. Thank you again, David. I appreciate your time and best of luck with the festival run and uh, hopefully theatrical distribution as well for the problem of the hero. Paul, thank you so much for having me. We appreciate it. All of us do.